So if anybody hasn't seen our other video where the Honda Talon had a crushed oil pan called Talon Needs a Toe. Factory UTV saw that video and contacted us immediately with a prototype to fix the issue, which is the X-Brace. They gave us a good deal, sent it out to us, asked us to get it on here and make a video, tell them what we think about it. So today, Factory UTV, we thank you. Factory UTV. So when you unbox your factory UTV package that comes in the mail, everything will be laid out nicely, all the hardware marked, main skid, rear skid, front diff skid, rock sliders, A-arm guard hardware. They send you very detailed instructions that tell you everything you need, step by step what to do. They send us a nice pack of stickers. You'll also need a 930 seconds drill bit a 1364 drill bit and a 3 8 drill bit as well as a 10 millimeter socket a 5 millimeter allen and a 4 millimeter allen obviously in the package will come your skid plates which are very stout nicely built everything looks very good on these we're excited to put these on and the x brace is an option you can add here's a hometown we we're talking about uh, we're getting ready to get this whole thing started we're going to get this unit out and get this one pulled in and get this going. I need a reverse camera, bad. Good. So the first thing you're going to have to do with this uh, job is remove the factory skid plate and a 10 millimeter socket. We'll get that done. You take your time and you want to make sure that you get all the mud that's packed up in these washers out before you put your socket on there. You don't want to strip those things out and make your life much harder. We noticed only a couple of hundred miles of light riding and there's damage to the rocker panels already. And back here too, I mean. More damage back there? Yeah, it's it's there. I mean, the, the factory skids on those machines leave something to be desired. That should be one of the first add-ons you do to almost any of these buggies. And uh, while we have the skid plates off, we're going to take this opportunity to make sure everything's tight. You don't have any leaks or anything like that because, you know, you don't have the skid plates off all that often. When you do, you should check things out. Okay, everything looks pretty good. Tight and right. Uh, I'm going to call from underneath this thing and we'll clean up this mess and get started on the install.
So the first step to install, if you if you're if you have the optional X brace, we're going to use three of the 20 millimeter bolts from the main skid pack, and you're going to use without the washers and hang it temporarily. And on the back side of the X brace, we'll use a C clamp to hold that up, to hold it in place while we mount the rear skid plate. So at this point, you have to drill two holes in the rear of the back skid plate, and they get nut sand bolts, which are hard to get a hold of. They're kind of under the rear diff. Would have probably been easier maybe to put a nut cert in here, but we're going to give this a shot real quick. Let's see where that's at. I'm not sure if you get your hand there. So we have tightened up the rear skid plate and the instructions now tell us after we have all the main bolts in the main plate to take our 1364 drill bit and drill holes in the sides and in the front. So there'll be four self tappers that this comes with. He's just tightening up the back of this. We're gonna it up a little bit. The bikes, the the, the the rear skid plate is completely tight at this point, and then you just snug this up a little bit so your holes are accurate where you want to put your self tappers in. And we're gonna use a 1364 drill bit for four self tappers in the main skid, one on one on each side and two in the front. Okay, so we have the X brace up in there, rear skid plate holding it up in there. We have the main skid in place, all tightened down. It's loose in the, you leave it loose in the front so that you can slide the front skid plate in. Front skid plate is clamped into place. And what the directions tell you to do is start back at these two holes. You drill them out with a 930 seconds drill bit. It's a nut and a bolt. You tighten those, then you move on to the next one and the next one until the last one so that you can shape this so it curves up in there. So right here, we had a self-tapper for the main skid plate that wound up stripping itself out. But we do have a rib nut tool. So what we're gonna do is drill that hole out, use a rib nut tool, and we'll be able to fix the problem with no, no issues. What this is, it's essentially like a rivet gun. 
these things that rivet gun smashes this down flat and makes a nut inside the frame. Crisis averted. So as we were taking things apart, if you take a look at this rock slider right here, the factory one, it's beat up, broken, chewed up. Pay attention to how thin this is. You know, not, not something that's overly durable. And so with this kit that we got from Factory UTV, uh, not just a skid place, but we also got the rock sliders. If you take a look at this, super thick, very stout. The hardware it comes with. And what we're going to do is we leave the stock rock sliders on. We pull out the hardware that's right here, 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 and here. There's four on the bottom. And we simply put the new one on top of everything and insert the bolts. There are two push pins. One right here, one right here. The back two on each side. And the directions say that we're going to go ahead and put some speed clips in place of those. The, the speed clips, when we take these push pins out, we will peel this um, factory rock slider out of the way, um, put the speed clip behind where these would have went in, and that's where the bolt will now go through, holding the factory UTV rocker panel into place. Clip installation for the rockers. As you can see, that clip goes right on these little brackets. Just hold the factory rocker out of the way. And those speed clips go behind where the factory push pins were. The factory push pins are to be replaced with uh, button head, or not button head, but the uh, hex bolts. So, with the rock sliders, we did have a problem with alignment while this was in the air we think the answer is drop it down to the ground put a jack under there and maybe we can get the plastic here to flex up to get those washers in the holes it is now time for arm guard installation our hardware is set out there are five of these hangers for each side looking at this super thick very stout Shouldn't be an issue. Shouldn't be an issue. This is going to be the easiest part of the install. We hope. Final step. Oh yeah, it'll be good. It does say before you tighten everything to make sure that you check for clearance when you turn the wheels. Uh, before you tighten everything up. Yep. Finally. But, so, yeah. Let's dig into it. Right on. So all in all, a couple things I'd like to mention. Um, I'd say you can certainly do this by yourself, but an extra set of hands would makes it much easier. Uh, I say all said and done, you probably have three to four hours into it with basic, very basic hand tools. Uh, I would highly recommend going ahead and getting two of each of the uh, 9 30 seconds and what was it, 11 30 seconds? 
It's 9 30 seconds, 13 60 fourths, and 3 eighths drill bits. Especially the smaller size bits. Have a couple on hand, nice sharp bits, because this is, you know, hardened chromoly or whatever it is they make the frame out of. Um, you could break a bit easy and it just slows your process down. So I have a couple of those on hand. Um, but it was a pretty straightforward install. The directions were uh, clear enough. So uh, that all went well. Um, had a couple little things, but, you know, you could expect that. Um, great fit and finish uh, all in all I mean it was I, I, I like the way this all went together I really do yeah it looks very nice